Hey, what's up? Thanks for checking out another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. DJ Keo, thanks for joining us again. Yes, thanks for joining us and thanks for watching and listening. Okay, DJ Keo, mm-hmm. you forced me to watch something. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I was forced. <laughs> I suggested it. I, suge- I, I heavily suggested it. <laughs> right. Um, so we both took a look at um, another Netflix show, uh, film mm-hmm. or movie. Um, it's a series called Jupiter's Legacy mm-hmm. with Josh uh, Dumel, Ben Daniels. I love, I'm not, I'm not going to say I love, but I like Ben Daniels. I like his work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Give us just yeah. a little breakdown of what, what, you know, Jupiter's legacy is, and then we can, you know, get into uh, the giggles. <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting thing about this is it's a show, it's a, a take from a comic book. And uh, was it Mark Miller or Mark Millar, how you pronounce Millar, it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a- uh, Millar he's World. Cre- yeah, he's the creator of it. And it's a show about, uh 19 what 1910 1920s right before the great the 1930s was when Mm -hmm. the crash was so it's a it's a story about some superheroes from ancient old times and now they have kids and they're they're trying to pass their legacy on to their kids so that they can be superheroes too and one of them is in on it and trying their best to please his father. And the other one's doing a terrible job and just could care less about her powers. Mm-hmm. And she's just she's doing her being rebellious. And so that's that's what the show's about. It it's a, a unique take on the superhero genre and trying to make it kind of grounded about the world around you. Cause usually comic books or you know, these kind of shows, whatever, they don't deal with the politics or the economy or this kind of stuff it's just superheroes bad guy here and that's the end of the show and this show is it's, it dies heavily into the economy what the world was like after the great depression right and you know what these guys roles are for having powers in that kind of universe so it's kind of grounded but not really grounded at all it's it's uh it's super in its scope of what they're trying to accomplish so that that's the general gist of what the show is about now just get into some like a little background business on uh malar world i hope i'm saying that right miller world or malar <laughs> world but netflix yeah. bought this company back in 2017 so they own the franchise yeah yeah they they own pretty much all the rights to a lot of his work right now so but they, own the they don't own uh malar world owns um the Kingsman and also I think kick ass or something like that. They, yeah, but yeah, Netflix so does not own those, you know? Yeah. So those are the two that they do not own. So yeah. again, this franchise is something that Netflix owns. They bought this company back in 2017. Mm-hmm. So they put this whole, you know, uh, Jupiter's legacy together. It was a series. How many episodes were there? Eight episodes, right? I think it was eight. Yeah. Eight episodes. Eight How much? How much did this uh, whole production cost? So they spent, it's the estimation. We don't know exactly what the real numbers are, but mm-hmm. they said roughly around $200 million. Wow. They and that's think, all in, paying the actors, everyone, you know, production. Yeah, that's the development of the show is about $200 million. Do you think that, um, and again, we're going to get into like the, the, the show, but do you think that $200 million, based on what we saw, eight episodes, was um, enough money or, you know, they needed more or was it too much? Okay. I, I think it was enough money. I think it, well, see, I don't know. The visuals, it didn't match some of the other shows that are on TV right now. Mm -hmm. A a good example of uh, Amazon. Amazon has a show called the tick Mm -hmm. and they have a show called the boys. Yeah. And the tick has, you know, superhero feats. The main character is like super strong and people fly and they do all this stuff like that. It, it looks a little bit better. I don't know if it's <laughs> the, the the special effects team. And I wanted to denigrate anybody for their hard work because I know this is a lot of work to put this together. But right. I, I say the visual aspect of the show wasn't as strong as some of the other outings on on TV right now. That's that's my opinion. What what do you think about the visuals for this show? Do you think it was money well spent? 
or it was just okay not good. well okay let me let me before we get into the visuals let me also say this um Jupiter's legacy also kind of reminded me of Invincible yeah right? it, it kind of it kind of got some of that element a, in there. a little bit it was, there, that, it was, it was Amazon it's not it's not Netflix it's Amazon Amazon, I mean, the Amazon show, like, uh, uh, yeah, Invis- yeah, yeah. Invincible, yeah, so it's sort of, you know, you have the father-son superhero sort of thing, you know, the father's trying mm-hmm. to bring up uh, everyone. The only difference is, I think, maybe, is in Invincible, they were, like, able to just kill people, whereas, like, you, Invincible you know. Raw as hell. I know, That's right? the rawest cartoon I've ever seen in my right. life. But whereas Holy in uh, Jupiter's Legacy, you know, uh, they... they weren't able to kill or get involved in politics. Okay, so the 200 million, what did I think about the visuals, the whole nine? Um, the, for it to be a superhero, sh- uh, a superhero sort of show, I wasn't really, I, I've seen way better superhero. I mean, just the way people flew, you know? Um, yeah, like, for instance, I mean, like- when, they, when they landed it, you could just tell they were like on you know, something was holding them up. You know, it was so corny, right? Um, know, so I, I wasn't, did. I didn't really see the superhero things, you know, that you would generally want to see in a superhero mm-hmm. sort of show. Um, and we're saying all this stuff, and we still haven't explained, uh, you know, got into it, but we're saying all this stuff 200 million. The show wasn't like really superhero esque. Um, I did, I will say this though. I like the story. Yes. I, I like the story a lot. Yeah. And I wanted to see more from the universe. Yeah. But um, I think the problem for the show, if the show had nothing to go on except like CW superhero shows mm-hmm. or because CW gets a bad rep. But and this is the problem for this show. It comes out in an age where superhero movies is no big deal. It's a right. common occurrence. Mm-hmm. Everybody has the flying down packed. Everybody has the capes down packed. Everybody has mm-hmm. the, the the costumes down packed. Right. Like where we came from, like where the say like the Avengers from nineteen seventy something, mm-hmm. where they just painted green on somebody and made the Hulk. Where we were <laughs> from that to where we are today is nine mm-hmm. day. Is yeah, clear as you couldn't get more clear, mm-hmm. and it's to the point where. Uh, CW has Supergirl and it has Superman and Lois. Mm-hmm. And Superman and Lois looks phenomenal. And I know they're not spending $200 million on the CW. On CW, exactly. On the CW. Su- yeah. Superman looks phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It looks it looks really good. And it's because the technology has gotten to the point now where right. mm-hmm. it, it can catch up to what people f- want to dream of. Mm-hmm. The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. They had a giant screen yeah, that they were true. able to put you in any environment. It was pretty dope, wasn't it? Put you, yeah, they could do anything, and it was flawless. The integration is flawless. You don't, unless you saw the behind the scenes, you wouldn't know this was a green screen. Or not you wouldn't know screen. it was just like it was an LCD the panel. Exactly. Yeah. You wouldn't know it was a panel. You would have thought mm-hmm. they filmed outdoors somewhere. That's, That's how true. good this stuff is. And so, like, when you hear this stuff and you look at it, you're like, well. It's kind of, it feels like out of place, out of time. Like if Mm -hmm. it came out maybe 10 years ago or five years ago, people would be like, that's fine. Right. Looks good. Mm -hmm. But because it came out today and then the boys just came, their show was last year. Boys looks phenomenal. Yeah. Boys looks like a movie. The color grading, everything. It looks like a movie. Yeah. And you have too many examples of how to do it right now. (laughs) <laughs> and so I, it just, it, it fell off. I couldn't put my finger on it. I was so, about to say that. I was about to say, okay, so you're talking about the CW, the shows that look phenomenal on the CW, knowing that they don't have a $200 million budget, right? They have no budget. <laughs> so, and then you see all of the other superhero shows out here, right? All the superhero yeah. movies, everything, even the superhero um, um, animated series, right? Mm-hmm. For the cheat code, the template is already out here. And for yeah, everything Jupiter, you need to know. right, Jupiter's legacy, the way they came out with this superhero sort of movie or series, it just fell 
it felt a little flat on its face. Again, I like the story. I mean, I think if you had a different director, let's say that um, Zack Snyder, you know, they <laughs> said, yo, you do this. It probably right, it, it would look different. The chain, right? <laughs> There's no question. It, visually, yeah. it looked different. There's no question. Yeah, so it was kind of corny. I don't know if they needed to. I, I don't know if that was something they wanted to do just for it to be sort of a period piece or something like that. And there were some other confusing things in the show. So let's mm-hmm. like in a uh, series. So let's get into it. So, okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to start off by saying there was something really confusing to me that I still, mm-hmm. I, I still don't understand. But anyway, these guys, the Samson brothers and their father, they owned um, a steel company. So they were battling, you know, Carnegie and also the Rockefellers, and they came out on top, right? They had a steel Mm -hmm. company in Chicago. Um, The Great Depression hit, the stock market crashed, and what a lot of CEOs did when the stock market uh, market crashed back then was commit suicide. People were jumping out of buildings, out, out of windows, you know, that's, that's yeah. just how it happened. And that's what happened to this guy's father. Um, mm-hmm. And then he was just stalking him all the way, all over, all over the place, you know, um, how did they get? Okay. And then he had these visions. What was that all about? So somehow he was chosen to go to this island to to get the powers and you need to get uh it was like five or six other people i can't remember mm-hmm. i think it was seven the number seven so you have to get all of these other people to go along with you and you have to complete the quest on the island so i guess i don't know what happened that made him be chosen to have the visions or whatever did did anything happen i did, did i miss it i don't know why he was chosen to do this okay so that's the other, that's something else that's confusing because when they got to the island, first of all, the island was like across the world. It was someplace across the world. Yeah, it was, it was off a, of Turkey or Morocco. something. Morocco, yeah, right, to go, exactly. They had to go to Morocco to go get Right, to exactly. Island. So it was just like, okay, they went there. Um, you know, then, <laughs> you know, they got, on, <laughs> they got on this boat and, you know, went through all these storms and everything. And uh, they finally mm-hmm. got to this island. And I mean, I don't know why he was chosen. I don't know. I don't know how the other, you know, I guess other people were chosen too before his time. And yeah, they were not they able Vikings. to. Right. Yeah, they had exactly. From different centuries that were there. Yeah. And they, yeah, they were, they failed. They failed the they, task. I guess they, they fought each other rather than they going killed to the each wall other. Exactly. Unit. Right. <laughs> so here's my thing about that. So. You know, again, they're going through all this stuff. You know, they they lost their company. They and and you know the stock market uh, market crash. Um, you know, they have buddies and stuff all over the city. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, once his father commits suicide, he just can't handle it. He keeps seeing these visions. He's writing things down and like all the stuff he's writing down. Um, he's sketching. You know, it's just like he wants to get to these different places that he just started sketching. You know, so he was in Missouri, you know, looking for windmills. And uh, I was just like, what is this all about? So, you know, again, the story. Yeah, the story was interesting. It just wasn't put together properly. Right. Well, I look I read the parts of the comic book. I've read I read the first section of the comic book Mm. just to where the show was. So there's differences in the comic book about the origins and what happens next. But I think that I think it probably would have been more compelling if you knew, like, say, for instance, with the Green Lantern ring. Uh, do you know you know about Green Lantern? You have mm-hmm. to be chosen because, you know, you have the moral courage and, you know, there's other factors why the ring comes to you. Right. They don't want the <laughs> ring to go just any badass. You right. have to be a good, a good human being mm-hmm. and you have to have strong willpower. Otherwise, the ring is not going to choose you. So, like, there's a reason why you get the ring. Yes. There was no visual reason in my eyes. At least I could be wrong. So I'll get the <laughs> caveat here. But I don't think there was any visual reason why he was chosen to have these visions and why he, he had to draw the circles on the paper and stuff. Right. And and why he had to go pick the people. There was, there was no reason. He didn't have that yet. I kept, there was thinking, no... I kept thinking, like, his father was a part of it, but... I don't, I'm, well, I don't he, know. It was a he, had the, he had the visions when he went to, the, to see the windmill about mm. 
this is why he needs these people. So right. at least that made sense why he got the other people. Right. But I there mean, was no, it didn't make sense why he was chosen. But like, again, maybe I missed it and I need to watch mm -hmm. it again. Because when he, when he went to the windmill, he went into this house. And when he went down into the basement, yeah, this the people who were supposed to be with him were sitting there at this table. Yeah, they're sitting at the table. So like it kind of right. gave him, the, okay, I need to get these people to go do this thing. That was cool. But why choose him in the first place? But like, that's beside 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 the point here. What did you think of the story uh, and uh, the realism for what they're trying to accomplish for the story for the times and everything like that? I thought this. I, I like the story. Like I said, I think a different like showrunner or director or you know just someone else needed to do it. The story was not bad, right? Mm -hmm. I just think that you know to bring in some of these heavyweight. You know, the, the cast, some of them were heavyweights. It's good you know? actors. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, you don't front on Ben Daniels. You know, he is, like, yeah. phenomenal, right? Um, Leslie's a good actress, too. She's Leslie an Bibb. Uh -huh. Exactly. Stores. You know, yeah. Josh Dumel, he, he does what he does, right? He did, he did Transformers. He's all right. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? I've seen, so, him, I've seen him in decent movies. He's not terrible. He's a good yeah. actor. I like the story, you know? I mean, I really do. I just think yeah. that I'm not quite sure if it was corny just because they wanted to like be in the period, campy. you know? Yeah, a little campy. Exactly. It's kind of it's very campy. The way the, the one liners from the villains and it was very campy. Right, right, right. I, I, I wish because the guy who did the show, he did Buffy, he did some other stuff with um Joss, Joss Whedon. Mm. So he did Angel, he's done Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he did some other shows with Joss. Like He's got that campy Josh yeah. speak and other kind of stuff. It's it's there because Buffy so, is real campy. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, that vibe was there. I think that he was probably the wrong showrunner. But yeah. like he was involved with Daredevil. Daredevil was phenomenal. That's an amazing show. But Daredevil's more grounded, yeah. so it's more of an actor driven thing rather than just people flying in the air and doing magical type things. Right. Even though there is that kind of stuff in the universe. Daredevil's fairly grounded. This is a universe with people with laser eye beams and and you know they're flying through the air, they're punching buildings like gear. I think that they probably needed somebody with the more action and somebody with the more uh sci-fi that kind of like okay, somebody <laughs> like somebody like a Zack Snyder or I'm trying to think who else could do it who who does that kind of fantastical worlds with the uh, with <laughs> flying and and punching and superhero stuff we there are um, a lot of people who could have done this you know because again like we i think you like the story you like the story as well yeah right? yeah no i like yeah. i like the story i i don't think that i think the guy steven denight or something like that i can't remember his name. oh the guy who did um the guy who just did um you know army of the dead it's, he did no, that, like right? he, no, he didn't. That's a uh, Zach is Army of the Dead, but like the guy who did this show, he did the he did the Buffy stuff and he did all the other mm -hmm. stuff. Like those are this can't be. I don't I don't know if he was the right guy for him. Off the top of my head, I'm I'm, I'm drawing a blank about somebody else who who could do mm -hmm. fantastical fight stuff like that. The Knight Maybe, does that though. He he does stuff like that. The Knight. Um, yeah, I, just, but, I, just, I don't know if he was the right guy for this one. Like, right, he, maybe yeah. the, the dudes who did um, the Avengers, um, the yeah. brothers. I forgot their right. name. Um, Lucas Brothers. No, 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 no um, not Lucas Brothers. But he, here's the point, though. Right, the story was cool. I mean, it was really compelling, you know, because um, there was some intrigue to it, which made me want to continue going to the next episode. Yeah, right? it's kind of a. You know, it's a mystery. They're, they're spinning the old and the new together, right? Uh huh. And kind of giving you a, a take about what's happening from right. where their perspective when they before they got powers and after they got powers. So, I mean, overall, the story was interesting. I just, I didn't, I didn't vibe with how they presented it. I think right. it could have been done better. I think you that's know. the that's the sticking point for me. But like, the issue was that once the first show I watched, I was like, "This is terrible." This is hot garbage. Yeah. And then I, I started talking to some of my friends who like some of this stuff too. Mm -hmm. And 
they were like, I'm not going to bother watching another show. <laughs> and I was bored. And I, was, I flipped on Netflix and I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll mm. see the next one. And the next show was interesting. And the story kind of grabbed me. And then I, I watched like two more shows. And then I read the comic book. Mm-hmm. I went and got the comic book and got it. So I was like, oh, okay. I figure out what's going on and why they're doing what they're doing. But I, I think that the presentation was just, oh, there's something off about it. And I can't figure out what it is. And I think the the bad guys that they had to fight were super campy. And that threw like me. Like Black it, Star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who was kind of like Black a main character, himself. right? He, yeah, Black he's like Star a was, super, yeah. he's a super power super villain. And you know he's got like mm-hmm. uranium in his chest or whatever it is, some kind of. <laughs> That's Tyler Maine. You know that guy is six nine. Yeah, he's a big dude. But he's like, a big dude. He's in his jail cell. And he's got glasses on. And he's reading poetry. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, just, okay. So <laughs> though the the glasses were readers, they weren't even like prescriptions. They were readers. Yeah, <laughs> he's got, so he had them so down like, on his nose. You know, <laughs> he, the the visuals of it is like, ah, oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, but. If you look at it from the superhero side of it, they're they're doing it, you know, fairly straight on. Like they're trying to do a uh, uh, a proper telling of the superhero story. The right. actors are trying to give it their all with the scenes, mm-hmm. and then you got the villains. They're all campy. Like the very first villain on the show, the first episode was this girl, and she had the cheesiest one liners that she was doing. Right, and I I almost threw my remote across the TV. I couldn't like, believe really? how bad that was. And it, it's just like, oh my god, this is gonna set the tone for what's coming next. But like this, that's what I'm saying. Like the villains was trash. Mm-hmm. The heroes, they're trying to give it their all with the scenes and they're trying to give you emotions, whatever. But it was it was disjointed for the show. Like the vibe was is off. And I don't and, I, I I can't put my finger on it. I could not mm-hmm. figure out what was wrong, but something was off. It was, yeah, it was definitely off. The villains were uh, like real cheesy. I think the other thing is this too, right? So let's not forget the, uh, I guess, um, um, the utopian who was mm-hmm. the, um, you know, the, the the guy who just ran it, right? You know, he was the, he was the super superhero. He was in charge. He's Superman. He's Superman right? he was, of that universe. Right, exactly. So, um, you know, one of the things they could not do to have these powers was, like we stated earlier, was they could not kill they couldn't kill and they couldn't get involved in politics. And yeah, so the so whole the guidelines for the group. Right. So the younger superheroes were like, you know, well, times have changed today. You know, I mean, we mm-hmm. have to start Swiss cheese and folks. They're like more powerful <laughs> They're, You know, they want to yeah. kill us. We have to kill them. You know, um, something that really kind of disturbed me was this here. Um, so when they went to the island, to get these powers, right? Mm-hmm. They totally cut that out. Like, how, who gave them the powers? How did they get the powers? So they they went to this, they walked through this crazy island. Right. They get into this area past the desert right, area. Right, right, right. Like a little cave thing. Mm-hmm. They walk in a cave, touch the wall, they get their powers, and they fly back out. And that's the end of that thing. Okay, see, but... I think they, they touch the wall so that something can open, you know? Um, yeah, but they didn't say what happened next. They right, so no they, one, they, like, right. So I don't know, like, if someone came down and said, hey, you have these powers, but you cannot kill and you can't get involved in politics. There is no mention in this series that well, states how did these people get these powers and why these restrictions were placed on. On think, those powers. I think that was the Samson's opinion about how you should handle yourself with these powers. Because he was an idealist the whole show. And his Sheldon. brother was more of a... Yeah, he was more of a mm-hmm. realist about what you can and can't do and what we need to do to get things done. So his brother was like, yo, we, we got to get things done. And this guy is like, well, don't worry about it. Things will work itself <laughs> out, whatever. Brain and now wave. he gets powers... <laughs> And since he's the strongest one there, and it was his idea to bring everybody there, mm-hmm. he he became Superman from the group. Right. And he he has the strongest powers out of the group, and I think that he set the tone for what you're supposed to do with the their their Justice League, if you will, for their their crew when they got it. So, so he's he's the one that was like, you can't. We don't want you to kill. We don't want to get in power because, like, I think he looked at the powers as. 
well, we're going to be dictators if we mm. take over. Who's going to stop us? Nobody. <laughs> Which is sort of and like, I, uh, you know, um, invincible. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> yeah. Like this guy, he's the top period, the top of the pyramid there. So he's. So uh, let me ask you this. Whatever. So if, uh, if the utopian was the most powerful, it seemed like Walt, his brother, Brainwave, was the most intelligent because yeah, how, how, he set, intelligent. how he set it all up. I mean, the setup, I mean, at the end, <laughs> I mean, and then, yeah. you know, these superheroes as well, like Brainwave, uh, Sky Fox, they have all these kids all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because Sky Fox has. I think that uh, would happen. To be honest, I think that would happen. I think a lot of superheroes would have kids everywhere. Right. But I mean, they have these kids and they like, they don't have wives. And they're just, I don't know if they're just, you know, out here just like impregnating <laughs> women. I think or something I honestly like that, think we have. You know? Like the, the boys, I think, is probably the most realistic interpretation of what the world would happen if superheroes existed. Right. They would be corporate and they would be corrupt as hell because. When you have people worshiping you because you save them off a burning building, whatever, that's going to go to your head. There's no way the, the Superman and I, I'm a DC fan. I like DC, but like there's no way Superman could be pure as a driven snow and not get corrupted with his powers. Impossible. So I, I, I don't think that. So Utopia, the Utopian had um, two kids, two children, um, Brandon and then his daughter, who was just like totally off the chain, um, yeah, Chloe. Doing all kind of drugs. Yeah, Chloe. Chloe was party girl. That is the type. Okay, so those are those are some things that I'm not sort of interested in when I watch movies. Like, okay, so you have a person, a sibling, a child who is a part of a uh, privileged family, privileged background, has everything, and this mm. person is just off doing drugs having sex, you know, reckless, the whole nine. It's just like, so that that's right there. That's a little corny to me because again, it's like what we were talking about, you know, when it came to army of the dead, like, of course, you know, a girl wanted to go do something she wasn't supposed to do because that's mm-hmm. the corny thing to do in a movie. I also <laughs> thought that this was the corny thing to do in a movie. Mm-hmm. It creates a storyline for that specific person. She was pretty strong though, huh? Yeah, yeah, that because you know it's just pure. It's good to the mother and the mm-hmm. the father. They're both super powered. But like, I for sure the kids rebelling. Yeah, that's gonna happen. I mean, kids mm-hmm. kids rebel. But if you have superhero superpowers as well, and you have a lot of pressure because they were born into a lot of pressure, yeah. being the, the most popular person on earth mm-hmm. for being super I, I think that's probably going to happen but uh, i don't know like see, superman the superman lois show it's tackling the same thing mm-hmm. the kids are better they're not as rebellious as these kids were in the superman lois show the kids are kind of like yeah okay they, they figure out their dad superman and they're like okay well let's kind of tone it down because we, we got superhero parents or whatever but like our parent but that's a common thing for these kind of shows because they need some kind of drama to keep the plot going. And, and I, I don't know. I think that's the writing 101. You need mm-hmm. kids rebel. So you have a beat where the parents are trying to deal with other things besides being awesome. Cause yeah. people, they, they don't like when everything's perfect. Mm-hmm. That's one of the biggest problems with Superman as a character. People kind of don't like it because he's too perfect and they kind of go with, Batman, or if you look at Marvel, Captain America is too perfect. So they kind of, people kind of like Iron Man. He drinks, he's a womanizer. <laughs> he does all kind of stuff. He doesn't follow orders correctly. Right. Whereas Ca- Captain America is button up and telling you, you got to do this exact way. Mm-hmm. So people kind of, they like Captain America. He's one of the oldest superheroes, but like they really like Iron Man in the Marvel the cinematic universe. Mm-hmm. And you know they they really like Spider Man because Spider Man's life is nothing but misery. All he has mm-hmm. is <laughs> he can't he's getting trouble keeping Mary Jane. He doesn't have a job. He's about to get evicted from his apartment. He's saving some people that don't even care that they saved them. Like that's Spider Man's right. <laughs> world. 
So when you have everything too, too perfect, they have to throw this kind of curveball in there where it something has to go wrong. Or, you know, like it's got to be something bad. You can't just have great right. things going on. Okay, so we, we will probably skip over a lot of characters that were in this uh, series because... Oh, they were all forgettable. They, they were, were all, all forgettable, forgettable. <laughs> right? So, Brainwave. <laughs> So they had this huge fight. They thought they were fighting um, Black Star, but it wasn't Black Star. It was a clone, and mm. it was a clone. When it came come to find out, it was a clone. And by the way, this clone, again, you know, the Utopians, these superheroes, they cannot kill and they cannot get involved in politics. But during this battle with the Black Star clone, Brandon, you, the yeah, Utopian son, son with a punch. <laughs> straight down <laughs> head first bashed his head in it's like literally like, inside of his head <laughs> yeah i was like oh okay we're going there all right like right, right. you know so they they take this back to the lab or whatever and they need to find out what's going on because they're like well wait a minute black star is still like in supermax right mm -hmm. so that's when it really starts getting intriguing right yeah, that's what the show picked up from then on. I was like, okay, what's there. going on here? <laughs> right. Now, take it from there. Okay, so they, they get this clone, this Black Star clone. They want to know, they probably, they think that there is something that they can determine, you know, in terms of what Black Star is thinking about doing by maybe doing mm -hmm. something to this clone. So take it from there. So what happens from this point? Wait, before we even get to that point, mm -hmm. how did you fit a watch into this giant metal ball and stick it in this guy. How did you do this? <laughs> I have so many questions. He didn't swallow yeah. it. How did this thing get down in his stomach? Or it wasn't even his stomach. It was like next to his stomach. How did this thing get there? Well, it was a clone though, huh? But it, that did was it a, that, around was, the, that it, was still kind of weird because the ball, the sphere was huge and it was, it was metal. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, how did this get there? Like, I, all right, whatever. Okay. So, they get they he goes into there and he needs his his daughter. Uh, Brainwave needs his daughter because she's also psychic to kind of get enough juice to get in there. So and, he has a daughter to, too to start to 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 get to the bottom of what the hell's going on. <laughs> and you get the twist of well, this Sky Fox guy they he used the 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 patsy for everything they've been doing. Right, as young people, George Hutchins, Hutchins, Hutchins. Yeah, they, they've they mm. been searching for this guy for a long time. He just got up and disappeared. Right. So they thought the Sky Fox guy was the guy behind it, but it turns out it's his brother who's doing it. Right. And Which I is think pretty highly book, intelligent, too, wasn't it, for his brother to even think about that and then just, just to put this whole scheme together. Why was this scheme put together? Why did he do all that? Because he disagrees with how he's running the superhero group, mm. he th with he's one, he's on the side that believes that maybe we should start uh, killing we should folks, start smashing <laughs> these guys, <laughs> and, and he agree he believes that in the at least in the comic book he believes that they should be more involved in the politics and running the government instead of uh, saving the government, bailing them out for a war or whatever. They right. they think that they should be telling the government what to do. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. it's more in the comic book, it's more implied that's what they want to do, or that's why he that's his motivation. Whereas they don't really get into the government that much in this version, it's just more of a family squabble over how to run the, the superhero group. And okay. Yeah. So he so um it wasn't brainwave, which is uh, you know, again, that's Walter uh Samson. It wasn't him who said, Hey, go get my daughter and we can both do this. It was sort of a, what's her name? Jane, right? It was Jane who yeah, suggested it's, that. It's Grace. suggested by the mother. Grace, Grace yes. It's Grace it's Kennedy. It's suggested by Grace, yeah. Exactly. So She's they the went and they did this. And um, and again, his, his, his daughter is just like some sort of a rogue, sort of like hit person for hire, you know? So um, they come that and they do I, this. That foot choreography was terrible. Um, <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> It was really bad. But it again, could. at that point, it does get interesting. But it, it was like you said, it was sort of campy. And a lot of parts of it was corny, too. Right. 
So, but this is when it starts Anthony. getting interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, well, yeah. When he brings her involved, I, yeah, like to kill his daughter like that, I was like, oh, okay, this is where we're going. Well, okay, it, so it, they, they, okay, before you even get there, like, so they went through this whole process of trying to read the mind of this mm-hmm. dead clone, Black Star, and they were able to, although the other individuals, like the, like, um, Grace Kennedy or the Utopian, they don't know. But his daughter does, and his daughter's basically yeah. confronted well, him, right? I think that from our perspective, it looks like he's struggling. I don't think he's struggling at all. Mm-hmm. I think it's for show. I don't think that that's actually what was going on. I think that guy was really dead, and it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I think that was for the mother to believe that this is this is really cool, the real enemy right. mm-hmm. rather than her brother in law. <laughs> so that's that, honestly, that's how that's the, how it came across to me, right? But uh, yeah, like it looks like he his plan was to to fool the mother and to fool everybody into thinking that the Sky Fox guy is the real guy behind everything, while he weakens the group. But in actuality, it's Brainwave yeah. who's in charge of who's behind all of this because he wants yeah. the power. He wants things to be different. He wants political power. He wants to be able to you know, kill villains and things of that nature. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And again, you know, in the end, the, in the end, he actually kills his daughter because she knows he kills his daughter. Yeah. That is crazy to me, but I guess they don't, they don't like each other anyway. So I don't think that was, that wasn't that big a deal for him. (laughs) Okay. And that's pretty much how it ends with him killing her. Right. Yeah. So but now that the show's canceled, I don't think I was about be to say, right. I was about to say, so when, before I even knew this, before I even knew the show was canceled, I was like, okay, I think mm-hmm. I would watch the next season just to see what's up. Yeah. I, I hope that they would fix up the next season and maybe polish it up a little bit better. Maybe work on the, maybe the special effects a little longer. You know what? They could have had some issues because, you know, we're in the pandemic. So maybe that was the reason why. The Mandalorian had issues, too. Look at what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. (laughs) I'm I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt for why it looks so bad. No, it was something wrong with that. You know, it was something wrong with that. It's the direction of the producers. Yeah. Okay, so now the show is canceled. Again, this this is something that Netflix does all the time. Netflix owns this. They own this franchise. They own it. This is their baby. And they canceled it. They canceled the show. It's do you, done. It's do you over. Think, so now, do you, do you think that they would just put it on hiatus for a little bit and then come back to it in a couple of years and maybe come out with a new show? No. And I'll tell you why. There are mm-hmm. so many shows on Netflix that I've watched and it's just like, hey, this is the first season and it's gone. One of the shows I was really looking forward to was an anim- an anime show called uh, Knights of Sidonia. Mm-hmm. And they came out with one season and they came out with a second season. And then that was it. Mm-hmm. And the second season, it was, you know, it was just like, okay, we know there's a third season. It's just like with, you know, Jupiter's Legacy. We know there's a second season because it just has to be. And they canceled it. How can you... This is, again, this is a little weird for me with the Netflix thing because it's like you are in this creative space. You're creating content, right? Mm -hmm. And so you create a piece of content, a movie, a series, and you leave it open, right? Yeah. (laughs) And then then you cancel it. What is that all about? I don't get that. That's so disappointing. The interesting thing about this story is that the show got decent ratings. Yeah. I think in, enough people watched it for it to go on for another season. I don't I know. There has it. to have been some kind of behind the scenes drama with uh, the creators and the people who worked on the show. There has to be some kind of thing because enough people watched it to like it, to keep it going. Yeah. So there's something, there's something else that went on here because it doesn't make sense. Okay, let's wrap this up. So, um, Jupiter's Legacy, Josh Dumel, uh, Ben Daniels, uh, Leslie Bibb, 
We know that it's canceled. A second season is not coming back. We know that, you know, there's there's some just some stuff out there that say that they spent an estimated uh, 200 million for this first season. Um, again, mm. it's canceled. It's not coming back. Let's not forget Netflix owns that franchise. They own it and they canceled it. So we saw the first season. The second season isn't coming back. Why don't you give it a rating? Oof. Okay. <laughs> My rating for the plot and the story, mm-hmm. I would give it an eight. Okay. Execution. Me... Mm-hmm. Execution for the, the villains. <laughs> The action, the flying. The don't let's not forget flying, about the fly in the landing. <laughs> the landing, the world being building. Yeah, the, the the all of that stuff. I give it a five. Mm-hmm. So like I, it it to me it was like everything. The elements are there. I like all of this stuff. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting is that they did a pretty good job taking the comic book and putting it on the screen. Yeah. It's just that. A good, perfect example of this is uh, if you watch, uh, there's a lot of people who recut uh, like uh, horror movies or action shows and they put funny music on it. Mm-hmm. And it completely upends the vibe and whatever the energy of the show. Mm-hmm. So like they they did the, um, they did it and they, they gave it a sitcom cut. So like like Friends or whatever, <laughs> one of those type of things. And put like a friend's some, music on there. Just someone who has no like just all this time on there. Yeah, hands. they're just like, yeah, they just, let's do this. They recut it. <laughs> they recut a, a, a advertisement for a show, like the the promo for the show, mm-hmm. and they gave it like a, a friend's type vibe. And they did another one with a Breaking Bad, and oh, they recut yes. it like a comedy. Mm-hmm. And and so everything is down to the edit and the show direction. Mm-hmm. I think that the show has a lot of good elements and it could be something amazing if it was recut and retooled and maybe spend a little bit extra time on the special effects you know tweaks the costumes a little bit uh shazam they just showed the second costume for shazam for the next movie mm-hmm. light years yeah. better than the first costume but wow. you know mm-hmm. it's the you got a little do a little work on it. <laughs> right. You, you got to do a little tinkering on it, but like right. you know, you'll get there. Mm-hmm. I think that they retool this show, maybe fix the tone a little bit better, make the tone more consistent, maybe make it hard R. I don't know. <laughs> maybe actually make it more <laughs> mature rather than a couple curse words, whatever, like really make it mature. Uh and you know, fix the costumes, tweak, not fix, tweak the costumes a little bit and Get the tone better, and I, I think that the show could come back and it, it it would be a hit. Well, it did well; like it wasn't like it wasn't a hit, but yeah. I think it, it would be more accepted with the the people who watch The Boys and Invincible and all this other yeah. stuff. They probably like this one a little bit better too. What what's Let's, your rating for this show? Okay, I'm I'm going to agree with you that uh, the story was an eight. I think the story is compelling. Um. Mm-hmm. I think the story had like a lot of legs. I mean, I can see it going in other sort of directions. Um, I'm going to give sort of like um, the acting and all the supporting cast. I'm going to give that a five. I think this, I think that if you think about some of the things that Ben Daniels has done, once you got into like the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth episode of Jupiter's Legacy, you really start seeing brainwave Ben Daniels. You really start seeing like how good he is, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I think um, the Utopian, you know, Josh Dumel or Dume. I think I don't know. They needed someone else there. You know that that he didn't work for me there. You know, he was almost like stiff in a lot of ways, right? I mean, I you knew that the beard. He the, the beard's pasted on, like you know that you could feel it. It wouldn't right, feel like know, a European. But I mean, like I think brainwave. I think uh, you could probably do something that's centered around him. Because if you think about maybe doing a second season, we know it's going to be sort of centered in part around him, you know. 
But mm. so, yeah, I'm going to give like the acting and everything else. It was sort of campy. I'm going to give that like a five. Uh, but again, the story, I like the story. I, I didn't, I had no idea I would like the story as a matter of fact. I mean, I, I thought I was good. going, the story is really good, you know, and I really want to see a second season. That's how interested I am in the story. Just the second season. Mm-hmm. There were some gaps. No, no doubt. There were some gaps like, oh, you left that out. You, you left that out. Yada, yada, yada. I understand. Like the villain's son, he's not as good as he is in the comic books. He's not, that guy's Who, not like Hutch? Likeable. Yeah, he's not likable. The, the, the guy who has version, like the uh the the baton. Yeah, the comic version of him is better. I'll okay. say that. And the, the the daughter is better in the comic book as well. Okay, yeah. Light years better. Again, so She's, we we like the storyline. We're giving the storyline an eight. What about the show overall? Like, you know, just the whole series, you know. I, I mean overall, that's, yeah, overall. I, like six and a half, I okay. guess. You know what? It's, I'm gonna. It's, the thing. it's good. It's not terrible, right? But the, the first show and seeing the first villain list, I, I left a terrible taste in my mouth. Yeah, about was... what the rest of the show was going to be about. Yeah, with the campy one-liners and the costume and everything else. I and especially the the like the show. You have the first show. That's where you spend the most money. You have to give the like the pilot show, like for Lost. The pilot show for Lost, they spent a ton of money on that. Yeah. They had a broken airplane on the beach somewhere. <laughs> they had all these actors with broken legs. They're looking crazy. Dude. You you saw the first episode of Lost. You're like, I need to see the, what's going on with this show. Yeah. It wasn't like, ah, it's all right. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe I'll come back. Like It was like, holy crap, what am I watching right now? And Invincible is the same way. That first episode at the end of Invisible, you're like, what am I watching right now? I need to see this. I need, yes, exactly. I I watched it straight through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The first episode of mm -hmm. Jupiter's Legacy was just, it's okay. So overall, if you give it a 6.5, it was sort of disappointing. You think? I think that the putting it in practice, like the actual doing the show, it's just, it just was, there was something off and I can't pull my finger. I don't know what it is. The vibe, I think, honestly, I think it was tone. Tone wasn't consistent between the, the people on the show. Some people were playing it, trying to be extra campy. Some people were acting seriously, trying to play, put their all into a scene. Mm-hmm. There was no consistency. And, you know, you got to blame the showrunner for that. They, they, they made it all over the place. If you're going to be campy, be campy. If you're going to be mm. serious, be serious. Yeah. And it's just like, it was off. As that to, to me, that's what it was. I'm going to give it overall a five. And the reason why, <laughs> the reason why I'm giving <laughs> it a five is because um, I think that um, Brainwave, Ben Daniels, this was sort of an injustice to him. You know, he's so much better. <laughs> he's, he's just so much better, you know? You were hung up on it. You need to see more Brainwave. You need a Brainwave spinoff, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm telling you because he <laughs> is, I mean, I that's that's the that's the show for me. You know, like, what is, is he a, doing? I'll say that that is a cool power to have. Right. To take over somebody's brain and just put something in their mind so they can exactly. see another world. You know? That is a very cool power, and I would like mm. to see more of that. But I also think that just him as as his art, as an actor, mm-hmm. you know, I think it was sort of um, beneath him you a little bit wasted? to do this. Excuse me? You think it was wasted? I think this this was beneath. He got a bag, obviously, for this. But I think just based on his craft, right, I think this mm-hmm. part was beneath him. Um, because, I mean, just, just being the sort of professional that he is, I think, you know, maybe he should have had a lot more to say about like how this, you know, movie or this show is being put together because it was campy and it was cheesy and it has a great storyline. And that's disappointing when you have a show, a movie, a film that has a great storyline, but the Mm -hmm. acting and just how it's all put together is just disappointing, you know, so that doesn't do any justice to the storyline and some of the hall of fame, you know, actors that are in it too. Like I said, Dumel, uh, Leslie Bibb, um, Hirsch, uh, even Hirsch, um, Mm -hmm. uh, Ben Daniels. These are, these are really, these, these people are really great at what they do. They obviously got bags to do this because, in the end, it was a really corny show with an mm-hmm. excellent story. 
So I gave it a five. Sorry, yeah, folks. I, if you want to know more about that world, I guess get the comic book and you can mm-hmm. read that in your leisure to see what happens next. But it it could have done it could have been done better. Execution yeah. was not great. I, yeah. I, I that's the best way because execution wasn't great. Well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I'm DJ Keo. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, listening to us. And until next time, peace. All right.